From small electrical repairs to light up props to animatronic costumes, soldering is just an awesome skill to have and it will open a lot of creative possibilities for you if you let it. Today I want to share with you guys the top 5 things that I wish I knew before I started learning how to solder myself. And even if you're a seasoned solderer, I think you'll find this video useful. Without diving into too many details, soldering is a lot like hot gluing. Instead of glue sticks, we use soldering tin, and instead of a hot glue gun, we use a soldering iron. Hot thing melts material, material joins parts. There are a few different kinds of soldering irons. Um, simple all-in-ones, um, soldering stations, portable gas firing ones. Here in the workshop, I prefer using a soldering station because the wire between the iron and the station is nice and light and it doesn't restrict movement. Some soldering irons have this garden hose of a cable running down your arm and it really impairs the movement. If you're trying to solder something delicate, it's just frustrating, you know? But regardless of your iron, um, all advice in this video applies just the same. Tip number one, use solder with lead. Solder with lead is much easier to work with because it is eutectic. It means that it doesn't really have a mushy in-between state between fully molten and fully solid. You want things to solidify ASAP when you're done soldering because it's easy to move things before it's okay to and mess everything up. Get the kind of tin that mentions lead or PB on the packaging. For example, um, SN60, PB40. That just shows the percentage. Tip two, flux. Just like hot glue, solder won't stick to greasy contaminated surfaces. If you want good adhesion, you'll have to use flux. Flux cleans, protects, and prepares surfaces during soldering. It is incredibly important and will most likely solve all of your soldering issues. Flux lets the tin flow and form a reliable joint so much more easily. Most solder wire, in fact, is a hollow tube that contains some flux inside it already, but most of the time, this small amount is not enough. And that is why it is sold in these little tubs. It kind of looks like Shrek earwax and don't inhale the fumes when you're using it. Tip 3. Pre-tinning. Pre-tinning is the best way to cut down on time spent on fumbling around with wires. You can get all kinds of helping hands and stands for soldering, but most of the times, honestly, they're just a hassle to set up. Instead of trying to juggle everything at once or using some janky stands, just do this. Melt some solder into the two wire ends you're trying to connect separately. This is pre-tinning. You add tin before you make a joint. Now overlap them and remelt the tin to form a solid bond. Boom. Done. It's that easy. Chances are you're not an octopus, so don't multitask more than you have to. And if you are, well, then call me and maybe we can make some sort of like a aquarium-based circus act or something. So, yeah. <laughs> Tip 4. Optimal work area. When soldering, you want all the heat from the soldering iron to go into the joint you're working on, but sometimes the work surface gets in the way. Plastic melts, uh, glass or ceramic is slippery, and metal just wicks away all the heat from the joint. No bueno. You don't need to get fancy. A tried and true soldering surface is just a plain old wooden board. Wood is an insulating work surface and it will stop heat spreading away from your solder joint. And this will help you get the most out of your iron's heat output. Number five, keep your tip clean. This one applies to the ladies too. Don't introduce needless contamination to your joints. Don't solder using a tool that you used for burning wood or melting plastic with. While soldering, use metal shavings or a wet sponge to remove excess flux, tin, and impurities. It's kind of self-evident, but most of us skip it, but trust me, don't ignore this one. The cleaner the tip, the more heat you can transfer. It's because all the debris form an insulating layer around your soldering iron tip, which prevents uh, effective heat transfer, so you end up spending more time soldering. More time spent soldering means more time to make mistakes, and you want to avoid that. So just practice good hygiene and clean the tip. And that was all that I have for you now. If you found this video useful, maybe share it to a friend who might make use of these tips as well. Um, but yeah, that being said, thank you for watching. I hope you learned something and I'll see you next time.